Tokamak Energy began life at Cullum as Tokamak Solutions. The company was founded by David Kingham, Alan Sykes and Mikhail Griznovich. Mikhail and Alan had worked on Start and Mast, spherical tokamaks that were pioneered at the Cullum Centre for Fusion Energy. Ten years ago we set out with an idea to commercialise spherical tokamaks, either as scientific instruments or as neutron sources. But we had some good backers early on. We had backers Mark White from UK Innovation and Science Seed Fund, Sir Martin and Lady Audrey Wood, founders of Oxford Instruments. Oxford Instruments themselves were an early investor and we had some other business angel investors. At that time we were not as ambitious as we are now uh, and we were not thinking about energy as the main uh, goal of the company. We were thinking about spherical tokamaks and its applications. Well, we thought that spherical tokamaks were very useful for scientific research into high-performance plasmas. Uh, by, by high performance, I mean high temperature, high pressure, high energy confinement time plasmas. There are several advantages of spherical uh, tokamaks, uh, like better stability, good confinement. But uh, a very big advantage is that a device can be compact, smaller, and that means that we can build it faster and cheaper. Then, uh, when we wanted to, be, uh, to have machines smaller, magnetic confinement is based on confinement of plasma by magnetic field. So the higher magnetic field, the better confinement. So we started thinking how we can design and build compact device at the same time with a higher field. Back in about 2008, Mikhail Grisnovich had the idea that high temperature superconducting magnets would work rather well in spherical tokamaks. But at the time, the material was not robust enough. At that time, we asked uh, Oxford Instruments to help us with uh, making superconducting coils, and they said that there's no technology. In 2011, we heard from Oxford Instruments that the latest batch of high temperature superconductor, rare earth barium copper oxide high temperature superconductor, was good enough to use to make magnets. So we thought, we better give this a try. Uh, I've called my friends at Prague where they have uh, a small tokamak that used for university research for students. And I said, will you be interested in putting an HTS coil on your tokamak? Oh, they said probably. We had uh, you know, potentially the use of a very valuable device for a couple of weeks. So we had to coordinate supply of the high temperature superconductor. So the material was ordered, it was shipped to Prague. And then uh, we uh, made uh, a coil for this tokamak. Mikhail found some people in Latvia who were able to make the cryostat out of plywood. They were uh, marine um, boat builders who used marine plywood a lot. So they could make plywood. <laughs> Uh, and uh, this plywood cryostat had to be made in four quadrants so it would fit in the back of his car so he could take it from Latvia to Prague. We've installed this coil on the tokamak with the help of Oxford Instruments. Uh, several engineers from Oxford Instruments helped us to do this research. And then in the end he, he got everything connected up and he poured some liquid nitrogen into the, uh, into the cryostat, so it co cooled the superconductor and switched on the power supply and everything worked, which was quite a surprise because it could easily have gone wrong. But from that point on, we knew you could actually handle the material. It was going to superconduct in the way we expected. The critical current was pretty good, even at liquid nitrogen temperature. We now know that it's better to operate it 20 Kelvin rather than liquid nitrogen temperature. So it was done and then they said, eh, okay, it, it looks that it may work. Let us think about industrial solution. The big change for the company to work on energy production came from one of our early investors. He set us a challenge to, to make our business plan more exciting, to change it from a scientific instruments plan into a fusion energy development plan. And the key to that was spotting that these high temperature superconductors could really do the job that we needed. We haven't changed our strategy much, 
but uh, we simply put a higher goal. So that is why from Tokamak Solutions, we came to Tokamak Energy. From that point onwards, we were committed to the big goal of fusion energy. By late 2013, Tokamak Energy had built its first Tokamak, the ST25. This was designed as a proof of concept to demonstrate that a small team could design and build a working Tokamak capable of producing and confining plasma. The main thing, I think, was team building and just to show that a small company of half a dozen of people can build a Tokamak. And we've demonstrated it. And uh, after we built ST25, investors came and they started looking at us seriously. Then we've built HTS Tokamak. In 2015, ST25 HTS was finished and tested with the aim of holding a plasma in a magnetic field created solely by high temperature superconductors. We were able to keep plasma for more than a day without any trouble. Previously in Tokamak's plasma discharges were maximum several hours, typically uh, seconds, sometimes minutes. So, and we could run it for, for day or for days if you, you would like. At that moment we were restricted by availability of high temperature superconductors. When we started making magnets, there were only two companies that could give us these tapes and 100 meters, few hundred meters. Now there are maybe a dozen of companies that are producing 100 kilometers. So that's much, much advanced now, this industry. 2015 saw Tokamak Energy exhibit at the Royal Society Summer Science Exhibition. We met members of the public to discuss our work, progress, and plans for fusion reactors made using spherical tokamaks and high temperature superconductors. And then there have been some scientific publications which have been really special. There was a paper by Costley, Hugel and Buxton from 2015 that ended up being the most downloaded paper ever in the Nuclear Fusion Journal. It showed the theoretical basis for what we're doing, that tokamaks don't have to be huge to be powerful, and a complete different view to the conventional view that Tokamaks are going to have to be huge to produce power. In 2016, Tokamak Energy began construction of ST40, our world-leading high-field spherical Tokamak. It's designed for a toroidal field of three Tesla and aims to achieve fusion conditions. ST40 was designed to take advantage of new approaches and technologies, including merging compression for plasma startup. Incorporating developments in diagnostics and plasma control, ST40 was designed to be a true 21st century tokamak. ST40 was designed to go through several program phases, achieving different milestones along the way. We are designing our devices to be open for innovations. There are maybe new um, other innovations in the future, like new materials, new heating methods. So again, we are thinking about it, we are open for this. So 21st century innovation, can make fusion faster. 2016 also saw the start of the HTS lab. Its mission to test and categorize different manufacturers' high temperature superconducting tapes and develop magnets to demonstrate high magnetic fields. The team initially included Rob Slade and Greg Brittles, who had a set of engineering milestones which they would continue to work on until 2019 with a growing team. Milestones would include reaching 3, 5, 7 and 12 Tesla and eventually exceeding them. The company began growing exponentially as the construction of ST40 continued. New team members were starting every month to work on the different systems or join the design team as they worked to build a high field spherical tokamak. 2017 was an important year for tokamak energy as it saw ST40 commissioned and operational. Power supplies were tested, control systems implemented, and a new control room was built to house the growing ST40 team when the Tokamak was operating. Tokamak Energy also welcomed a new CEO, Jonathan Carling, who joined us from Rolls-Royce. This meant a change of role for David Kingham, CEO since 2009. So I was chief executive of the business until autumn of 2017. And at that point, we pretty well bottomed out the physics challenges of the spherical tokamak. We knew 
with confidence how, how well the spherical tokamak would perform. We knew enough to know that it was time to think of it as an engineering challenge, not just a physics feasibility challenge. And so it was time for a, a change of chief executive to bring in an engineer. We were very fortunate to be able to recruit Jonathan Carling from, you know, with a background in automotive and more recently at Rolls-Royce in large turbofans, you know, power plants that go on wings. That has turned out to be an extremely good move for the business, getting more engineering discipline in. So it's not just about the ultimate performance of the devices we're building, we have to be able to build them efficiently, operate them efficiently. 2017 also saw great progress from the HTS Magnet team, who began hitting their milestones ahead of schedule. When we achieved a three Tesla Magnet, I thought that was fantastic. We did it just before Christmas in 2017, as I recall. But then we went on and it was seven Tesla about three months later. 2018 began with plasma operations continuing on ST40 as the team worked to achieve plasma temperatures of 15 million degrees. And then the ST40 tokamak achieving 15 million degree plasma temperature, hotter than the centre of the sun. That was a big breakthrough. This milestone was achieved using merging compression, a technique that Mikhail was very familiar with from his work on earlier tokamaks. It was quite straightforward because 15 million degrees we achieved just from uh, so-called merging compression, from formation. I was talking about this innovation, how to transfer magnetic energy directly into kinetic energy. And we've demonstrated it immediately during first weeks and months of ST40 operations. But that time we couldn't sustain plasma for long enough. It was just a few milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, 20 millisecond pulses. Also in 2018, Tokamak Energy moved to new, larger premises, enabling the construction of a dedicated HTS laboratory and providing extra space for ST40 and the new power supplies that would be required for its next campaign of operation. The year ended with ST40 being rebuilt in its new home and upgraded at the same time for its next operations campaign. In 2019, ST40 was further upgraded, including new diagnostics, a neutral beam, a new solenoid for longer plasma durations, and better plasma control. New power supplies were added to increase the toroidal field. During this upgrade process, ST40 saw improvements in plasma duration, temperature, and control. Now we have a very respectable spherical tokamak ST40, which already demonstrated highest toroidal field in spherical tokamaks, not only highest, but about four to five times higher than in, in previous devices. So we have now neutral beam, we have uh, omic solenoid, so we could easily have a second pulses. It's a huge progress this year from 10 milliseconds and just 15 million degrees, we jumped to a second range and mega amp range plasma currents and, uh, and kilovolt range temperatures. Our ST40 at the moment can already achieve over 15 million degree plasma temperature at relatively high pressure. We're beginning to push up the energy confinement time. We can see how to push up the temperature to 100 million degrees. You know, purely as a scientific research facility, that's quite remarkable. And it's achieved by a combination of compact spherical tokamak and much higher magnetic fields than people have previously expected. And that gives you the basis then to go on to a fusion power plant at relatively compact size. Also in 2019, the HTS team announced that they had succeeded in producing a magnetic field of 24 Tesla in magnets made of high temperature superconducting material. This is an important step on the route to commercial fusion energy in magnetic confinement devices. Personal highlights. I think one of the uh, things that I can be proud of is that we now have a team of, of, of people who are capable to do experiments. I'm si sitting here and the experiments are ongoing on ST40 without even my presence. Uh, this is the first thing. The second thing is, of course, appreciation. Everybody is interested in what we are doing and what re our results are. So that's a big uh, achievement. I'm quite happy with this. 
One of the secrets to Tokamak Energy's success has been the development and growth of the team. Some members of the ST40 team began working with us as students, sponsored through university, and have since gone on to become integral parts of the ST40 team, creating novel solutions to the challenges facing us as we push towards 100 million degrees. The highlights, well, investment rounds are very important to us and we've had several successful investment rounds. Our investors are spread across various sectors, from government to retail, pensions and IT. That's an important highlight, but that's only possible if you achieve your technical goals. And now we're up to 24 Tesla. It's a very strong magnetic field in a compact, high temperature superconducting magnet. So we've gone in a couple of years from early prototype to a magnet that is clearly powerful enough for a fusion power plant. So we know the material will basically do the job. It's a huge personal satisfaction in the way the business has developed. It's been you know, a great pleasure to work with the people here and to see the progress of the business. Tokamak Energy has been funded by private investment since its inception. But 2019 saw the most successful investment round to date, raising more money than the previous nine years combined. 2020 is the beginning of a new era for Tokamak Energy, with aims to achieve fusion temperatures of 100 million degrees in ST40. The construction of our HTS magnet demonstrator, Demo4, and our plans for STF1, our next step Tokamak, which will achieve energy gain. For the next 10 years, our goal is to build a, a prototype fusion reactor. It is very ambitious, no one, no not no one, but many people are saying that we are too ambitious and it will be very difficult. Yes, it will be very difficult, yes, we are very ambitious, yes, uh, we are risky, but uh, we think that we are on, on the right way and now we are not only ones, so there are other uh, companies in the world, private companies that are also um, looking at us as an example, they are going similar way and they also want to uh, make fusion faster. So it pos it's possible, we shall see. So far our progress was tremendous, so we shall see how it will go ahead. The team have high hopes for the decade ahead, not just for Tokamak Energy, but for fusion in general. We are trying to get to fusion energy as fast as possible, but it is going to take a little longer. But by the time the company is 20 years old, we should have electricity into the grid. So that's a good challenge for the next 10 years.